Nathan Bedford Forrest was a Confederate general who, during the Battle of Fort Pillow, massacred 280 African American soldiers as they were laying down their arms simply because they were black. Later on, this man would become the first Grand Wizard of the KKK. And we have statues of him dotting our landscape. Now, I want to be real clear here. This is not a speech about whether we should keep those statues or remove them. Rather, it is a speech about the history behind those statues. Those statues are relics of something called the Lost Cause, which is the idea that slavery is not the primary cause of the Civil War. I worked in a Civil War museum for two years, so I have been exposed to the intricacies of the arguments surrounding the cause of the Civil War. And I have also been exposed to how important it is that we look back to our history truthfully. It is no secret that Clemson was built on the plantation of John C. Calhoun. So if we are going to grow not only as a university, but as a community, we must look back at our history accurately. Ultimately, the lost cause led to the idea that slavery was not the primary cause of the Civil War, or not a cause at all. So today, we must discuss the causes of the lost cause, the effects, and some solutions we can implement to ensure that our history is told in truth. First, in order to understand this issue better, we must first understand how it came to be. The causes of the lost cause are twofold. First, we have a desire to sentimentalize the past. Second, we have had a long struggle with racism. First, we rewrite our own history to make it more comfortable for ourselves. According to Caroline Janey, in an article entitled The Lost Cause, written in the Encyclopedia of Virginia on July 27, 2016, a group known as the Daughters of the Confederacy are the ones largely responsible for today what we know as the Lost Cause. Many of them lost sons or husbands in the war, so they had a desire to memorialize their lost loved ones. What they did was they funded educational programs that revised history to make their loved ones look better. And unfortunately, these educational programs are still used in states like Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia, and yes, South Carolina. Next, America has had a long struggle with racism, and the lost cause is a direct result of that. According to Miles Park, an article entitled, Why Were So Many Confederate Monuments Built, written in NPR on August 20th, 2017, Many of the Confederate monuments were built generations removed from the Civil War, either in the 1920s, which saw the height of the KKK and Jim Crow laws, or in the 1960s, which saw the Civil Rights Act. Regardless of who these statues depict, they were erected to help maintain a whites-only political system and to help maintain the status quo. Now, I want to be real clear with everyone here. Revising history struggling with racism is not just a problem in the South. It's very much a problem in the North. In my own hometown, Springfield, Illinois, which I love very much, we had a race riot in 1908 that was so bad that the NAACP formed as a direct result from it. And we ignored it for 100 years. Now that we have discussed some of the causes, we must discuss how the Lost Cause affects us. Namely, the Lost Cause leads to the spread of misinformation and prevents our nation from healing. First, the Lost Cause has led to the idea that slavery is not the primary cause of the Civil War, or even a cause at all. If we look back at what the Founding Fathers of the Confederacy had to say, they would be very proud to say that they seceded because of slavery. In fact, they did. According to Alexander Stevens, who was the Vice President of the Confederacy in his cornerstone speech in 1861, on speaking on behalf of the Confederacy, he said, Its foundations are laid, its cornerstone rests upon the great truth that the Negro is not equal to the white man, that slavery subordination to the superior race is his natural condition. He was proud to say, he was proud to admit that this war was about slavery. Now, many people will make a rebuttal and say that most of the soldiers did not own slaves, therefore the war could not have been about slavery. And it is true, most of the soldiers of the Confederacy did not own slaves. 
but it was the politicians, not the soldiers, who seceded from the Union and caused the war. Next, the lost cause prevents our nation from healing. And again, you don't just have to believe me when I say that. You can believe Robert E. Lee. In 1869, when asked about Confederate monuments, Robert E. Lee said, I think it wiser not to keep open the swords of war, but to follow examples of other nations and seek to obliterate the marks of civil strife and to commit to oblivion of feelings and gender. Unfortunately, as we saw in Charlottesville, he was right. Now clearly, these effects are harmful. But there are stuff we can do to help mitigate these effects. Namely, what we can do is we can keep ourselves informed and we can be advocates for context. First, we can keep ourselves informed by reading primary sources. When you read a primary source, you avoid reading other people's historical interpretations. The other thing you do is you get to weigh the facts on your own. In terms of the Civil War, when you do this, you will see that the issue of the day very much was slavery. Next, we can be advocates for context. According to Hannah Nantinson, in an article in the Washington Post written on September 22, 2019, many cities, such as Atlanta and Savannah, are actually contextualizing their Confederate monuments. <coughs> By that, I mean they're putting large signs in front of the monuments that not only tell who these people are, but why these statues were built in the first place. Doing this helps avoid the violence of Charlottesville from happening again, but it also allows us to actually learn from our history in a way that's not superficial. Now, Springfield was not able to grow and heal until it recognized what happened in 1908. Now we are building a monument to those who were lynched in 1908. And while there's still a lot of progress to be made, it has put us on the right track and certainly helps the city. Ultimately, the lost cause has led to the idea that slavery was not the primary cause of the Civil War, or even a cause at all. We looked at the causes of the lost cause, the effects, and some solutions we can implement to ensure that our history is told accurately and truthfully. We fought a war 150 years ago that forever changed the character of our nation. We are one nation, one destiny. And no matter if you're a Democrat, a Republican, a liberal, a conservative, a northerner, or a southerner, we will always be one nation, one destiny. We can't ever forget that. Thank you.